Okay, hold up. Do I look just at you? <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> the camera. Oh, okay. Uh, no, you can look what at Tanvir. I catch myself looking at Tanvir yeah. and Chris yeah. all the time because I Good love looking them. Good looking guys. Oh, yeah. Look at these studs. <laughs> um, uh, episode 31 is with you, Nelly. Uh, so for people that have been waiting for us for a long time, um, we've been moving studios and we're finally in our new one. Yeah. And you're our first podcast. Well, so thank you for having it's me. a special podcast. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. And um, just before we start, I wanted people to know that we are sponsored um, by Mena's Donaire for this podcast. And they're in Beaumont on 50th Street. And we'll talk a little bit about why they're sponsoring this particular podcast. So okay. we'll move that to the side, discuss it later. Nelly, you're a makeup artist. Yes. That is your profession, your career? Yes. Okay. So and you're you're our neighbor you're like not far away this no. is like in the Leduc area yeah okay cool have you ever lived in Edmonton I have and then I moved to Sherwood Park and then from Sherwood Park we moved to the acreage and now I'm back in Sherwood Park you've been everywhere, I've been everywhere. what's your favorite I like Sherwood Park because it's close to was everything. it an acreage there no okay but it was close to everything five minutes away rather than like on the acreage is nice mm -hmm. but it's so far from every freaking thing, <laughs> right? You know? so. But it makes your trips more meaningful. No, don't you find? I feel it makes it longer. Like longer, but that—that's that, a special person you're going to see. It's not just a neighbor. Hello. No, I have kids, so I have to pack a whole herd. How many kids do you have? I have three. Three kids? Mm -hmm. You look so young to be having three kids. Well, I had them young. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so, um, do you do you have any siblings, brothers and sisters? I have three sisters, two brothers. Wow, big family big too. Family, yeah. Are you still very close to them? Oh yeah, we're so yeah? close. Oh yeah, Good. every single day we're we're on a group chat. So yeah. the shit that we, we say yeah. is. <laughs> you could tell she almost pumped the brakes on yeah. shit. She goes, are you allowed to say shit? Yeah, I'm allowed to swear. But that's good. That's good. Big close families yeah. are, uh, are. I'm envious of. That's that's what everybody wants, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's great. We're huge. I was always telling my parents, like, did you ever think about stopping? Because there's yeah. six of us, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not really normal for. They're in love, man. I don't know. Are they boozers? Were they drinkers? No, it was an arranged marriage. So they're like... For an arranged marriage? <laughs> they must have... They're like frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming here. Um, what's your background? Before? I'm from Pakistan. Oh, okay. Born and there. You're born there? Mm -hmm. Wow. So you've been here since how old? How old were you? So when I was five, we moved to the States because my dad was going to school. So mm -hmm. he brought us over. And then when he was done in school, he decided he wanted to come move to Canada. So we came to Edmonton. So I was, I've been here since I was like 11. Oh, OK. When did uh, the makeup artistry start? I've always liked it. I've always been I've always been that girl that went into her mom's like makeup and stole yeah. her stuff and put it on. And then I was always that girl that everybody came to for to do your makeup right high yeah. school i did everyone's grad how so does I, that happen is it because you're doing such a good job or are you so. more of an artist like why do people even approach you for that uh, there's well, always one in the group so i'm just wondering I'm the how, one in the group, okay so, so i'm wondering I'm, how that stuff happens i'm that i always just like doing it right yeah. so i thought it was fun painting my face and you know I, as a kid, I always got in trouble for doing it. Yeah. And now I look at my parents and I'm like, see, I made a career out of it. So you're welcome. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, no, I just always had a passion for it. Yeah. I always I always wanted to learn more and do more. And yeah, it was, it's fun. It's not a job to me. It's like getting my girlfriends ready kind of thing. So mm -hmm. now when I have clients, I'm always, it makes me feel good to know that I make them feel good. So. That's a good feeling. Yeah, it is. You, you mentioned painting the face. So do you consider yourself an artist? Because most makeup artists, um, I mean, not most people forget, but most people I think do know that you're you're an artist. Like you're you're very much an artist working with contouring people's yeah. faces, different clients. So do you consider yourself an artist deep down inside? I do, yeah. Because like when it comes to Halloween time, I get really artistic and do oh, crazy that kind things. Of art. Yeah, <laughs> and like I. I just started doing like Halloween makeup like a few years ago and I just I was so drawn by it and like yeah. I love doing it love creating I love challenging myself so like if it's harder I'm like more intrigued to like learn it and if I can't I have to practice and practice and practice until like yeah I get it perfect so and when I was a kid I always loved to like draw yeah. even though I can't draw that great yeah. but <clears throat> Practice makes perfect. I practice. So I was always intrigued by when people would draw things or paint things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I guess I've always had like an artistic side of me. But yeah. would I call myself an artist? I guess now I would. Not when I was a kid because yeah. I thought I wasn't like talented at anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
but <laughs> shame on you you know you live and you learn so yeah. do you find you give yourself more credit now for for being an artist like yeah do you take it that much more seriously because you feel that yeah. way about it yeah oh yeah like now i'm like a perfectionist so i have to make sure like when i'm looking at my clients i'm like would i like this on my face like would i feel like a hundred percent walking out of my chair when i look at my client and if i don't like it i'll, I'll tell them I'm, I'm changing it i'm sorry i don't like it <laughs> so oh so you because uh, i'm one of my questions was because i told you i prepared a few <laughs> one of my questions was have you ever done makeup for somebody and didn't like it oh yeah like and straight up told them like this looks ugly yeah. on you yeah. really oh yeah i okay. won't let anyone out of my chair unless i like it 100 percent. like they might be like oh i love it but i'm like mm, well i don't like we're changing okay. it so, so to do this with your clients do you work out of home out of a shop um where how can people find you like where do you do this uh i do it out of my home and then yeah. i also travel to them so if like for most of my brides they want me to come to them right makes so sense makes sense i travel if you need me to go to like a studio i'll go to a studio but preferably if they could come to me it'd be a lot easier you know yeah. but i always tend to work around them because it's their day makes sense so yeah uh, how do you approach each client do you approach them differently um and i don't mean approach i mean approach in the sense that how do you take them on like um, if somebody, you know, if somebody wanted you to do their makeup, but but how, how do you determine how much makeup this particular person requires? Is it is an artistry all on its own to figure out uh, what this person may need that that they might lack? Uh, if, for example, if it's like an arched eyebrow, if it's uh, lower lashes more mm -hmm. than upper, I don't know how that stuff works, <laughs> but I'm assuming that you 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 have a, a way to approach each client like steps. Well, I, I tell them I'm not your natural glam girl. Like I ask so many questions beforehand because there are, there are times where I'm like, they're like, do whatever you want. And I'm like, okay, so I'll do what I would do to myself. And they're like, oh my God, that's too much. So I've learned over the years to ask questions. What do you like? What do you not like? How, how much of an eyebrow do you want? Because I can go pretty heavy yeah. or how natural you can make you, omar size yeah. eyebrows and then you can, I make, can normal make a unibrow eyebrows. pretty perfect yeah. do you know what i mean yeah. and there are there's clients that have told me like i don't like it i actually had one client hate it and i was just like okay like yeah. i've never had that no one's ever told me they hated it yeah but she was older and i was like i was getting frustrated but then at the end of the day i was like you don't wear as much makeup as i would or i understand so by the end of it, I told her, I was like, listen, for the amount I'm going to charge you, you might as well just do it yourself because you technically really don't want any makeup. And I'm pretty honest with everybody. Like, I don't lie. I won't sugarcoat anything. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. And I'd rather, I tell them all the time, be 100% um, truthful if you like it. If you don't, I will change it right away, whether it takes me 45 minutes or two hours. Like, we will get it perfect. So... I think when you tell that to them, they're a little bit more calmer and like, you know, easygoing rather than being like, oh my God, I don't want to hurt her feelings kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, of course. I always tell them, don't worry about my feelings is what you feel. Right. Yeah. So it's I, hard to be that honest sometimes. Like I, you might I'd get a haircut it. by somebody and you don't like it. It's yeah. not yeah. many people would be like, you know what, man, I don't like it. I want my money back. There's very few people that yeah. would do that because I've walked out with bad haircuts and said, oh, man, this Some guy butchered me. I'm out of here. But I don't say anything. It's like. I I'm ugly. What's this guy supposed to do? It's not his fault. But with makeup, you, know? you can change it. With yeah. your haircut, you're kind of screwed, right? Like yeah. you can't really grow hair. Fast forward. I, yeah. Time. So like with makeup, I can change anything. I can, if they don't like the lipstick, I can change it kind of thing, right? So it's a lot easier, I would say, to be more honest. Mm -hmm. But like with an updo, like if I'm doing hair, then I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you're stuck with this hair. Yeah. Right? After I spray it and everything. So yeah, I think honesty is really, really key to yeah. everything. So you've been doing it for a while. Makeup I've been doing for a long time, I think like eight years now. And then hair I just got into like two years ago. So So you're doing both? Yeah. It just comes hand in hand, right? Yeah. It's kinda easier when someone's like, Can you do hair? So I made myself learn how yeah. to do it. Yeah. It's not my favorite, but I won't say no. Makes but. sense. Yeah, like in the eight years you've been doing it for, have you noticed that the age of the girls you're being approached by to do their makeup has gone down? Well, because I've noticed that when we went to school and we were in high school, not not as many girls as there are now wear makeup, where now you find like a 15-year-old, 16-year-olds yeah. all done up, and you're thinking, wow, back 
back, you know, back in the nineties or something for a 15, 16 year old to be putting on the makeup. I mean, she, yeah. she got a talking to by mom and dad. Do you find that the age is dropped? Oh, big time. I was even saying it to my client the other day. I was like, back when like I graduated 10 years ago, not everybody didn't care about their makeup. It was like the blue eyeliner, silver eyeshadow. Like you looked haggard, <laughs> you know, now everyone's like perfect. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But yeah, it's getting younger and younger. And I, I don't know, like, I don't think I would be okay with my daughter wearing makeup, that much makeup at like 13, 14, 15, maybe 16. But yeah, it's definitely getting younger and it's more, I feel like it's more of a trend right now yeah. to have the perfect makeup, look, you know, a certain way kind of thing. So it helps my industry, but mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah, it's definitely getting lower and lower. I would have figured that mm -hmm. for sure. I thought that was, a, sorry, I thought that was an obvious question, but I wanted to hear it from you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah. I'm not, I don't see it. Right. It definitely makes you feel old, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when you've watched the transitions yeah. and generations go by, you're like, I'm getting old. Yeah. Get up oh there. yeah that's okay. You live and learn. Yeah. Know, um, uh, how do like how educated are people? Because when we when we um, hear about makeup, especially guys, mm -hmm. we don't know anything about makeup. All we know is we walked into shoppers or some sort of fancy <laughs> store and walk around you're like uh i would be confused in the first two steps as yeah. what's happening which brand now there's this big controversy about um certain brands of makeup being tested on animals yeah what's your stance on that do you have one do you have an opinion when it comes to animal testing with makeup versus something a little more organic well i i'm not like super super picky like would i prefer the more natural yeah but because like I've been using the same products over and over again, like I kind of tend to stick to what I know. And there's like a certain brand that I do like that don't test on them. I prefer not to test on animals yeah. just because it's cruel and stuff. But yeah. if I go into a store like Sephora and I like something, I'm going to buy it, you know, but I won't like read everything. And, yeah. You know, so I'm not totally against it but i'm not like for it either yeah. so i'll be honest i asked that question not knowing what animal testing means when it comes to makeup really know do they it, just have monkeys in cages and they're putting lipstick on them and seeing which one looks the best like yeah, are they saying, I well, like I, I really I don't, don't know I, how it works i'm not kidding I so when i asked that question such a general broad question that I, I don't even know the understanding of it but i thought Maybe you'd have, it doesn't seem like you know either. I don't, no. <laughs> this I'm, is your industry. Next time you come on this know, podcast, like, you have your shit together, all well, right? Well, if you tell me the questions ahead, I'd probably... Well, they're going to be about makeup, <laughs> right? So um, anyways, um, what's your end goal with this makeup journey? Like, is it, uh, for most people, is it to have their own products? Is it to uh, one day own a uh, company that distributes all these makeup artists and you line up jobs for them? Like, what's the end goal? Do you, do you have one or is this just fun? Um, no, my, my, I don't have like necessarily an end goal. Like I never want to like put a, a limit on what I can do. Like a finish line. Yeah. Like I've, wherever it takes me, it takes me. Like I want to do YouTube. I want to, I want to step into other fields and stuff with it. Maybe one day have my own cosmetic line, which would be great, but you know, it takes time. Right. Have um, you thought of a name for it? I have. I suck at names. Like, I am the worst at coming up Test with them names. out. Test them out. Let's hear, like, one or two of me and the guys will tell you if they're good. Well, I thought about naming it after my daughter, which would be, like, Layla Cosmetics. But then I'm like, mm, I don't know. Like, it I doesn't have seem to... original. It, it seems yeah. like it goes so well together with makeup that you just want to change it. Layla. It sounds like you know. and something like, a makeup artist would be doing. Like, Nelly <laughs> Cosmetics. And I'm like, I don't really like my name with it. Kind of, I don't know. So. Is that your full name, by the way? Because you're Pakistani. But is yeah. Nelly short for something? For Neelam. For Neelam. Mm -hmm. Am I saying it right? For Neelam? No, just Neelam. Neelam. Yeah. Okay. So like when I was in school, no one could say my name, which I don't know why, because it was, it's not that hard, but they always just like nicknamed me Nelly. So it's stuck. Yeah. I like Nelly. Yeah. So it was and like, I like the singer Nelly. Right. I don't think I know a Nelly I don't like. Well, now every that song that has Nelly in it, I'm always like lip syncing to it. So, okay. Do you know any that you'd like to? <laughs> no, no. Talk? Are you, <laughs> you sure? Don't, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> we, it's pretty acoustic in here. <laughs> oh, um, so, <laughs> so your end goal might be to possibly have your own brand one day. Yeah. Uh, but you do want to get on YouTube and, and I do. Yeah. I don't blame you though. Because I do. I feel like I would be. I'd be good at it, you know? I. What would you be doing? Like, what would your YouTube channel be like? How would it be set up visually? 
It would definitely be, be mostly about makeup, but like vlogs, you know, do some challenges on, on there. Just like it'd be fun. You know, I want it to have like a fun, like everybody enjoys it kind of vibe where it's not like so serious, but it's not like just a joke either. So it would just like a chill vibe. Are you tech and camera savvy or is this something that you'd hire somebody to capture as you're on this journey? Or would you have the capability of being able to do both sides? I know for me, like I couldn't do the podcast by myself. wasn't for Chris at Tanvir. Like I, I probably do it on my phone. I'd be like, <laughs> we're with Nelly today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just, I, I could, anybody could do anything, but it's a matter of how much energy you want to devote into yeah. something. Sometimes you just can't. You're doing a few things. You're, you want to focus your energy somewhere you're good rather uh, than somewhere you're eh, decent. You know what I mean? Well, I made my sister go buy a camera and like okay. learn. Okay. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, so you I, have some slaves. Pretty much, yeah. I was like, okay, you're going to have to do this. What about the kids? They're not, uh, could well, they? Are they at that age? My my older son is, yeah. Oh, he's okay. very like tech savvy, whereas mm -hmm. the middle one's more like goes outdoors and gets yeah, dirty yeah. kind of yeah. thing. But I'd get my sister to do it. And if not, I would learn. I'm the type of person, if I want something done, I will learn it perfect it and then if i need help i would go get other people to help me but i'd have to understand it to know exactly my what vision. you want yeah yeah that makes sense you know so i'm like a perfectionist when it comes to everything i do so yeah. if i, I think you have to be as a makeup artist yeah like the fine details yeah. right not yeah. just in makeup but in just other every, things if i suck at it i won't do it <laughs> like i'm just like i'm those people like if you're playing a sport i have to win mm -hmm. i'm a great winner i'm a sore loser yeah so I'd have to be good at it. I've been losing at chess lately, and I found out that I am a sore loser. But for years, I told people I wasn't. I'm pretty good at chess. Chess? <laughs> chess, <laughs> you mean chess. chess. <laughs> yeah, I think when you say chess wrong, that means you're not good at it. Chess. Do you I mean... even know what checkmate is? <laughs> Do you know what checkmate is? I do. What's checkmate? When your king's done. Oh, so chest is right. Chest. Okay. Chess. Um, but yeah, I've been losing. <laughs> I, I lost a few games to Tanvir, and I was like, I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> but he's got tricks. I'm going to Google it. Um, uh, so you have to be good at everything. You're a perfectionist. Um, you, you know what you want and you go after it. Yeah. I hope that we see you on YouTube. Uh, I think you have that charisma about you. You have Thank that you. fierceness in your eyes that you would command attention if you were to have a vlog or people kind of putting you on camera and, and, and promoting yourself and your brand. I wish you luck. Thank um, you. We could possibly use your services if we ever throw a big party here yeah. where the, have you ever done like gatherings or get togethers where you were hired to like i've been hired to do a live painting at an event oh. but is that something a makeup artist sometimes gets hired for like oh yeah i've gotten hired for photo shoots where i've had to do like 15 16 girls in like a span of like a few hours you know like it's an all-day event but Oh yeah, like all my bridal parties are usually six, seven, eight people, you know, one being the bride, which is like the main, main person takes up a lot of your time. But, but yeah, I would say. Do you, do you charge uh, a certain amount versus <clears throat> like, do you charge a certain amount for, uh, you know, somebody you go and, and you do their makeup or maybe a bridal party versus 20, 25 girls? Like does the price a change do you give some sort of a, a deal on a, on a group sort of um, get together no i usually have set prices because i know what i do is good so you pay for what you get kind of thing right so i always tell people like if you want me you're gonna get great looks and it's gonna last all night and i always get the feedback like oh my god i slept with my makeup on it was great the next day <laughs> i thought you were about to say i slept with my makeup artist I no, was like, no. that's kind of freaky <laughs> sorry i'll no, uh, no, 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 no. pay better attention <laughs> right now no, head out of the gutter. right yeah exactly but yeah no i i stand by what i do and yeah. i always tell people like you'll be happy 100 percent. most of them 99 percent of them are super happy with yeah. it so I have like a, a set price and it is what it is and you know why do some charge more than others like what's what separates you if i'm going to give you an extra 20 30 dollars for showing up what do you find what do you find the differences besides what we talked about like having that trust and mm -hmm. and guaranteeing your work is there something else that you do that seems to be a little better than your average makeup artist not to put you on the spot because we all think, think I don't know. I just think my my work is a lot different than other people. Like my work is, I don't want to say perfect because I do make mistakes and stuff, but it's pretty good and it does last all night. So 
it's guaranteed that you're gonna you're gonna look and feel great right where i've seen other people's work and i'm just like oh i would i would tweak something i would fix yeah. something i and, and not I'm, just you like the, the average person they see a makeup job that doesn't look good and we, we might not know what doesn't yeah. look good about it but we just know overall yeah. we're just that's not appealing I, or for, for whatever reason I did uh, a fashion show a few weeks ago and I did a few of the girls and then there was this one girl that I had done a few days prior and she had gotten her makeup done by somebody else and like after she finished she comes up to me and she's like I need you to fix this and I was like I didn't want to say anything because I don't like to hurt people's feelings and I don't want to go step on people's toes and she's just like meet me in the bathroom fix my makeup because I'm not going out on stage so I go in and did all my thing fixed her and yeah. she's like thank you so much oh my god I don't think I would have been able to yeah, walk yeah. and and she's performing so that probably helps the whole confidence yeah. thing yeah. so I wanted to do it where the makeup artist that she did have didn't know because like you know you can't you can't expect everybody to be great at what yeah. they do and you don't want to yeah. hurt people's feelings because they're different than what you do right so i was like well, let's sneak around and sounds, we'll like, do it. <laughs> you know? sounds like a conversation i had with my uh, barber <laughs> when i like leave town i get a haircut there i come back in the city i'm like can you fix this back here yeah. he's like who cut your yeah. hair it's like that 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 conversation you always try to avoid with yeah. your barber and he can tell when somebody's touched your hair yeah so now yeah. i just go to one guy no yeah. matter how long I have to right? wait, I'll wait for him to come back you, from Lebanon. When you trust somebody, you trust somebody. Yeah. I have a friend that will not go to anybody else yeah. but me, so I can never say no to her. And I'm just like, the other day I was doing her makeup, I was like, I'm so tired. But like, it's okay. I feel happy that you trust only me. Right? right? It's a good feeling. It, it must be yeah, a good feeling yeah. for you. Um, I have two questions, but mm -hmm. we'll try to remember them as we go along. But there's two important questions. Then we're going to move on to our segment that okay. we have planned for you. <laughs> um, question number one, if I remember it, um, would be how do you keep up with trends that are going on? Because obviously I, I'm not in the makeup industry and most guys aren't. So we don't know what's hip, what's hot, mm -hmm. what's, do you find that there's so many trends that you have to keep up with? Are you true to one style? I mean, and I guess the second part to that question, question number two would be, I mean, I've seen some trends in Lebanon where the eyebrow was cut off up oh, here I've seen that, yeah. where it's just like a, you know, so, and I hate that look, mm -hmm. but what is, what, what, wh how do you foresee trends happening and, and is it hard to keep up to them? Um, no, because, well, first of all, social media is so big right now. So you can, anything that happens, it happens so fast and you see it. And Old Town Road. Yeah. And you're cha it's changing all <laughs> yeah. the time. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the big trends are more in like bigger cities I find right yeah so if you're vancouver like toronto yeah. new york yeah. yeah so like it tends to happen there more but if i do get the odd person that wants like whatever's going on now i will do it yeah but i usually te tend to stick to what i know and what yeah. i think looks nice and if some trend is just dumb i'm just like i'm not gonna do it like I'm, are you on top of it like do you find yeah. that you, you okay so yeah. you you're curious enough to always know what's sort of hot mm -hmm. and in and, in and i'm always learning right like i'm always like i don't I always feel like if the more the more you know, the better you are. So, if I could learn from you, great. If I can pick up one or two things from you, even better. You know, if you want to pick up something from me, great. Like I'm never, I never think that I know everything. Yeah. So if I can go to another makeup artist and they show me something, I'll be like, okay, cool, I'll try it. You're or, willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, you can't be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's you can try. You could try, but it's horrible when you fail. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, donkey. Um, uh, <laughs> let's ask one more question about makeup. Then okay. we'll move on to our segment. Okay. Um, uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with today's world, it's not so much that we're communicating through social media, but everybody seems to have an edge with everything, mm -hmm. whether it's to do with art, makeup, uh, camera work, filming. Everybody's got looking for that edge. Do you yeah. find that there's a technology out there or maybe something I don't even know about yet that's kind of hit the market that's going to revolutionize the makeup industry? Um, is there like some sort of app you get and I don't know. Where was I going with that whole app thing? But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Is there a technology out there that's making makeup um, a lot harder for people that are making a living off of it? Or is it still no, the I, old school yeah, way like, of doing things? you have to get somebody to do your makeup but i feel like now because of youtube instagram people, tutorials tutorials people can do it on themselves more like you said like the younger generation is yeah. 
they know how to do their makeup. The whereas, left has become as good as the right. Yeah. yeah. Like it's like when back in the day when I was in high school, not every girl knew how to do their makeup. Contour mm. was not perfect. <laughs> you know, we didn't know what highlight was. Now it's like girls that are like 15, 16 have high-end makeup and i'm just like how the hell are you affording all that because that you don't have a job. you can tell the kind of makeup they oh, use oh yeah no yeah. You, you can tell you know what's high-end and you know what makeup do i use natural <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted to ask you what your uh like so you don't think that there's a technology out there that is up and coming you people are still kind of yeah. It's an art. You're going yeah. to the best person you know yeah. with the best attitude, the best, um, what's the term? Um, There's not a robot to yeah. put your makeup on. Yeah. Do you know what okay. I mean? I'm so, just picturing a robot yeah. trying to do it like hold still. It's not like a camera or, you know, nowadays the only thing with makeup is you take better pictures because yeah. of the phones yeah. or the, uh, the cameras. Expensive phones. Yeah, you know, yeah. so other than that, people are taking better pictures of yeah. their makeup which is can be deceiving yeah. because you're like oh i'm just gonna photoshop who this. are you yeah who's you that know? person no one pictures? has an ugly picture nobody everybody's beautiful i love yeah. it we is live it? in such a beautiful I know, right? social media world then you world. see them in person you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> then you see a then you see their phone and there's actually 40 pictures of that picture they just yeah. picked the best one yeah. and fucked with it that's the one thing i'm always scared of is like with my work i try not to photoshop it so much like if i'm taking a picture because I don't want to be that girl that you see in person and you're like, huh, that's not yeah. what I seen no, online. No, by the way, you look just like your pictures. Oh, thank just you. as gorgeous thank in real life. For anybody that's watching, <laughs> this girl looks just like what you're seeing. Um, but no, I've seen makeup beautiful. artists that do do that. Like me yeah. and my sister, we went out, we seen the makeup artist and we're like, what? Oh yeah, no. There's some uh, straight up you that's don't recognize. Just, that's not your that's, nose is longer in yeah, the pictures. That's weird, have, bro. Like, <laughs> Holy sh like yeah. A lot of work. And I was like, I looked at my sister, I was like, make sure I am never one of those girls. Well, it's like, just more it's more it's more about what they're dealing with or for whatever reason, whatever's happening inside. Like it's I, not I don't think it's an outward projection. It's no. just something that they're either dealing but with or insecure about. Wise, yeah, man. It's like even their makeup, like it's the apps like, don't help. See uh, those apps? I take no. a picture of my six-year-old niece the other day and the app gave her like makeup and <laughs> yeah. and glow and pink hair she goes oh my god i'm like forget you saw that, yeah. Let's just that picture. <laughs> um uh, okay so let's do our segment okay uh, we don't have a name for the segment but what we're gonna do is have you call a friend <laughs> tell them you're stranded you're stranded oh and you need help okay. now not in an hour okay not in two hours now and you have a flat tire and you desperately need their help if they don't say yes to you we haven't figured out how we're going to punish you. Maybe a shot of crown after or something. Okay. But if they say yes, you stand to win a dinner for two at Mena's Donaire here in Beaumont. Okay. I'm going to apologize for right now for what she might say. Oh, okay. Okay. This is being recorded. So, I mean, if, okay. if they start cussing and no, racism comes that. out okay. and no, you're no, revealed no, 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 for who you really like are, it's, but... we can edit it. Okay. Yeah. I'm Make allowed sure to you, say whatever I want, right? They have to be on speaker. Okay. We got to hear them. So, you got to <laughs> kind of plant the... Make sure you hear them properly. You're okay. not on this podcast, okay? but you're literally in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to say I just left and I got a flat tire. Yeah. And you're near the airport because you had to make a quick stop um, and you have a flat tire and, and you don't even know what to do. You've, you've tried calling everybody and there's like 2% left on your phone for a battery. Okay. Hold on. You know, I'm surprised she hasn't texted me. If yet. you mess it up, <laughs> you're not getting any donairs from Mena's and they're amazing donairs. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hello. Hey. Hey, did you survive? Oh my God, you have no idea. That was so awkward. Well, yeah, it's a podcast. Um, so I have a problem, and I need you to come help me. What happened? I got a fucking flat tire. And shut up. Near their house. Near whose house? The podcast people. So, the um, Beehive Podcast. Do what? I need you to come help me. Okay, what do you need me to do? Like, you Come pick me up? I'm stranded literally almost in front of their house. It's so embarrassing. Oh, fuck. Did you call me yet? No. I called you. 
Hurry, my phone's gonna die. Okay, you're gonna come get me? Yeah. What's her name? <laughs> What's her name? What? Angela. Angela, you are a good sport, Angela. Uh, it's Omar from the Beehive Podcast. I'm the host here. We're sitting with <laughs> Nelly and we're doing a segment where if you say yes to come in and help her out in this situation, you guys win dinner for two at Mena's Donaire here in Beaumont and you just won her dinner for two. So thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate it. This is our first segment, so you did well. You did well, my friend. Okay. And these are the two certificates, so you can Perfect. tell her all about them. Mena's Donaire on 50th Street here in Beaumont, just on the main She's main a good row. friend, I told you. <laughs> there okay. you go, honey. These are yours, so thank you can you. thank her and you can hang I'll up on her back, now. Okay. <laughs> good job. She's like my ride or die. Yeah, no, I can tell. We want you to call your ride or die, so that worked. Oh my gosh. Good I job, honey. Good job. <laughs> um, uh, okay. So uh, when you're enjoying those donairs, you think of the Beehive you, Podcast. I'm going to send you a picture. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. We'll post it. We'll oh, post it. Good. Here, we'll give you one of our cards in case we forget. Awesome. Include that. Oh, wow. um, uh, well, we appreciate you coming out um, and, and winning that dinner for two just to, <laughs> just to cap things off. But it was a pleasure getting to know you. Um, and, and now we feel like we know a little bit more about the... I feel like we're family. Makeup. Yes. Right? And we're not... We don't live too far. No. So, like, hit us up. You don't have I to will. just do a podcast. We, right? can, we can talk. I'm going to be here all the time. Yeah, you sound just like this when you just call anyways, right? Um, but you are going to be episode 31 in case awesome. anybody asks. Um, and for those of you guys that like this podcast and enjoyed the content, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, ask us questions. Uh, Natalie will answer them. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll be on here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, how do people get a hold of you if they need to? Um, like, how are you reachable for makeup? If I need my makeup done in the middle of the night, who do I call? Ghostbusters? Uh, no, you can go on my Instagram, makeup by Nelly Eight. Um, email, which is makeup by Nelly Eight at hotmail dot com, or those are my two like main things. So how you get a hold of? Them. Yeah. Okay. Makeup by Nelly eight. Mm -hmm. Why so eight? I'm still makeup by Nelly. So, oh, so, so you threw in eight? That was the only thing that was available. So because eight's my hockey number. <laughs> eight's my favorite number. Oh, there you go. Okay, I knew we were besties from the right? beginning. Ovechkin, can't go wrong. Right. Awesome. Okay, so what? What'd you say? No. I was asking if it was the number eight or if it was. Yeah, is it number eight? The number eight. The yes, number yes, eight. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. I would have hated it if it was actually written no. out. I was like trying to change it to other things. Like I said, I suck at making up names, so <laughs> I was like, and then it's already stuck. So I was like, okay, I'll take the eight. <laughs> Nelly, <laughs> she <ooh>. follows <laughs> me too. Who? <laughs> makeup by Nelly. Oh, really? She doesn't use it. Do you but... follow back? No. We're having this whole discussion about following people back. I followed follow you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we follow back? Well, you must have since you found me. We didn't. We never will follow back. You follow me. You should be interested. You in followed what we me, have. and then I followed you back. I was like, I don't maybe care I should follow that. them because <laughs> I'm gonna go see their. Podcast. The only time I unfollow somebody is if I see like they've just killed a buck, slid it, throw, and they took a picture with it. I'm like, I don't like that guy yeah, no. or that girl or whoever, right? Yeah. But yeah, it's a pleasure having you, and you uh, don't be a stranger, so we can. Uh, have you on in the future? Tell us what Please you've been up do. to. Please do. This was so fun. Right? This was so I fun. I knew you'd like it. I, I did, told you. Yeah. Did that like, shot oh, before home? It did. Right? It did. I don't know if I'll need it next time, but now that we're so close. You know? Yeah. I mean, not many people are used to this. The yeah. first time I put this on, I, my voice like, why do I sound like you that? What? That's what I was right? worried about. I was like, am I going to sound like a dude or something? Everybody hates the sound of their voice. I hate this. No, my voice is very deep for a girl. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> but put it this way: you're not gonna outdo me in deepness, so you're Thank good. You. You're always Thank gonna you. sound okay. like I'm a gonna girl. sound like Shrek. You're gonna sound like the the, the girl. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 it's been like ten years since I've seen Shrek. Uh, it's a pleasure having you Thank here, you. Um, and uh, have fun at Mena's. And I will send us a picture from there. Let us know how you liked it. I'm going to. Yeah. Thanks, Mena. By the way. Thank you. Okay. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you.